Hey students, this is lesson 135. Uh, what we're going to do is find out about a uh, different form of a linear equation called standard form. And we're going to try and learn how to recognize the standard form and, um, and how it's related to the slope-intercept form of y. I'm going to skip here to page 22, the bottom of page 22, and start by doing a problem where we need to, we're going to look at a table. Now, again, these are, um, these are linear equations. We're going to do this one here. They're just written in a different form. So um, a lot of the ideas that you know about linear equations, like they go up by a constant rate. Um, if the change in the input is 1, then the change in the output is the slope. Those kinds of things are all the same. Um, but the way you work with them is a little bit different. So um, first thing I'm going to do is teach you how to create a table for an equation like this. And so we're given these inputs, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and so on. And what we need to do is find the output in this equation, which is y, when the input is these values for x. So I'm going to input, um, and you don't have to do all of them because, uh, like I said, this is a linear situation. So if we find a pattern, we can just continue the pattern. We don't need to keep doing the problems. So I'm going to choose the easiest ones I can to, to solve for. I'm going to pick 0, I think. I'm going to do 8. So I'm substituting 0 in for the x right here. And then uh, I'm going to try and figure out what y value makes it true. And uh, you can see why I, multi I chose 0 for my input, because 8 times 0 is just 0. So I have 0 minus 2y, which is negative 2y equals negative 2. And then working backwards, I can just do negative 2 divided by negative 2. You may remember it last year like this, and that's equal to 1. So when x is 0, y is 1. All right, let's, let's do one more. We'll do an input of 1 is a pretty easy one there also. So let's input 1 now. So I'm going to do 8 times 1 minus 2 times y equals negative 2. Simplify that, and we get 8 minus 2 times y equals negative 2. I'm going to change this subtracting subtraction to adding a negative so you can see that we're really adding 8 here. So what I'm going to do now is subtract 8 from negative 2. So working backwards, I'm subtracting 8 from negative 2, which is negative 10. That makes this 0, so that's gone. And so I get negative 2y equals negative 10. Now I'm just going to do negative 10 divided by negative 2. And that's equal to positive 5. And just knowing that this is a linear relationship, um, if my inputs go up by 1, my output should go up by the same thing. So from 1 to 5, I know I'm adding 4. So I'm going to add another 4 here, make this 9, 13, keep adding 4, 17. Working backwards, I can subtract 4, and I get those values. So there's my input-output table. You might want to just check one of these values, like this one, just to make sure it works. 2 and 9. So what I'm, what I'm do, it's doing is substituting 2 for x and 9 for y. And just seeing if that makes it true. So if x is 2, then I do 8 times 2 minus 2 times 9. And I want that to equal negative 2. And that's 16 minus 18, which indeed is negative 2. So that works, and I think I have the right table. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is graph that table right here. I'm going to plot the points in A. And I'm going to use some of the same ideas, too, that I have about linear e equations. So I'm going to start by plotting this point. That's the y-intercept, 0, 1. Then I'm going to go 1, 5, and 2, 9. And that should be enough for me to make the line. So our y-intercept was 0, 1, and our next point was 1, 5, which is over 1, 5. And our next point was 2, 9. That goes there. And we can see a pattern here also, and you can just continue the pattern because you know it's linear. So we'd have one there and one there, and then just draw the line. And that's all there is to graphing that. All right. All right, now the next thing I'm going to do is 
This is at the bottom of page 23, to develop and understand C. And what we're going to now do is just see if we can't relate how this equation becomes this equation by using our table. So this is the same table that you made with me. And, um, and one thing we want to remember about our slope-intercept form of our equation is that the 4 right there, that's the slope, and the 1 is the y-intercept. And from a table, we can get that information. So um, just looking at this table, our slope is uh, the change in the output, which is y, so that change, which is 4, divided by the change in the input, which is 1. These are going up by 1. Or you may remember if you're going up by 1, then it's just the change in output. But um, again, the output would be your rise, the input would be your run. So 4 divided by 1 is our slope, so that's our coefficient. And then our y-intercept, our constant term, is the output when the input is 0, which is represented by this point right here when x is 0. So there's our equation. Now that equation um, will also generate this table, so it is equivalent to this equation. It's just that um, this one is written in slope-intercept form, and this one is written in what we call standard form. Okay, so you so you can see from the last problem that it's um, nice to know a little bit about the table to help us change each uh, equations into uh, slope-intercept form to get the equivalent form of the equation, and. Uh, and so you need to know parts, some parts of the table. Um, and one thing about standard form is it makes it easy to find certain parts of your graph, the x and the y-intercepts. Now just to define this quickly, um, the y-intercept, most of you know this already, but the y-intercept is the spot on the graph where it crosses the y-axis. So, um, or we could say it this way, the output when the input is zero. And the x-intercept, that's the spot on the graph where it crosses the x-axis. And um, that is the input when the output is zero. And just to make a quick graph of that, Let's say this is my line. I'll make my line in different colors so you can tell what it is. Um, the x-intercept is right here, where it crosses the x-axis. And the y-intercept is right here, where it crosses the y-axis. And we're going to look for those two points just by doing a little math here. Um, and so I'm going to set up a little table just with those two points that I want there. So. The y-intercept is the output when the input is 0. So in other words, if x is 0, what is y? And uh, the x-intercept is the input when the output is 0. So now my output y is 0, and I want to know what the input to get the x-intercept. So this is the y-intercept, and this is the x-intercept, if we can find those. Okay? Well, to find them, all we have to do is substitute that value of 0 into the equation and figure it out. So for this first one, we're going to substitute x for 0. So I'm going to do 2 times 0 plus 10 times y equals 20. And this works out nice because 2 times 0 is just 0. And 0 plus anything is whatever the number is. So I just get this. 10 times y is 20. And y equals 2 because 10 times 2 is 20. So I just found that value, that's 2. And now to find the x-intercept, I do the opposite thing. I put my 0 in for y. So I'm going to do 2 times x plus 10 times 0 has to equal 20. And 10 times 0, of course, is 0. So I just have 2 times x equals 20 and x equals 10 because 2 times 10 is 20. And so that's my x-intercept right there, 10. All right? 
And uh, one more thing we may do with this, since we have two points now, we could find the slope if we wanted to. And the slope is just the rise, which is negative 2, divided by the run, which is 10. So negative 2 tenths is my slope. Multiply that by x, I could simplify that to 0.2 if I wanted to. And then my y-intercept is right here, and that value 2 is my constant term. So I can easily change that equation into slope-intercept once I have those two points. All right, that's all I'm going to do today. Um, we'll talk about this more next time I see you in class.